Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and to, do we have a show for you? Today's broadcast, powerful revelation truth for sure. Today, the Jerusalem factor. There's no question. If you read the Bible, you'll find out that Jerusalem plays such a major role in the end times. But even before the end times, Jerusalem, is it the navel of the earth? Is it, some said it's where the Garden of Eden may have been. God's name is written in the mountain in, in the Hebrew letter. It is no question that God has put a blessing. And even the temple mount there where the temple was, the Bible says God dwelt in in the Holy of Holies right there in Jerusalem, the Holy Mountain. So we're no, there's no question the Jerusalem factor is huge, and we're going to talk about it. I'll be right back in just a moment. The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end times. Is this the final meeting of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, all right. Well, folks, uh, Jerusalem factor, it's powerful. Now, we know Jesus rode on the donkey, came into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. They praised him. They threw the palm leaves down. They threw their jackets in the street. They sang Hosanna to the highest. Jerusalem, without question, is historically been the most sought after city in the world. Uh, it has been attacked 29 times, conquered 18 times. Every major empire that's ever been on the earth at one time or another took, had control of Jerusalem. And yet God promised the, ch the children of Israel that he would rebirth the nation of Israel and Israel would be its capital. It's incredible. 3,000 year prophecy of Ezekiel 37 and the dry bones that Israel has been rebirthed. Jews have been sent back into the homeland from all over the globe. And Jerusalem has just, of course, now been declared the capital of Israel by President Donald Trump. And the talk of the third temple is heating up as well as peace talks, covenants that hopefully the, in their minds can come. But here's the thing. You can't have real peace without the Prince of Peace. And in the midst of discussing peace and hope and harmony, wars continue to break out, conflicts and battles all around the Holy Land. But Jerusalem... I've heard uh, different ministers make this comment that Jerusalem is the city where all three religions of the apocalypse are converging at once, Judaism, Islam, Christianity. And so as we watch the events, and the many times I've been there, and I walk, I've been all over the old city, I've walked through all the cobblestone streets, and of course, the feel, the, the energy, the sometimes tension, the, uh, the amazement of the people who come there from all over the world and for the people who live there, whether you're in the Jewish quarter or the Armenian quarter uh, or, the, or the Muslim quarter, and you go into different shops and meet the different people, it is something like no other place in the globe. But it also is the very place Jesus, we know, preached there, did miracles in Jerusalem. I mean, the Jerusalem factor is unbelievable. Even Jesus stood on the Mount of Olives and wept over the city of Jerusalem. And how he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you uh, unto me like a hen would her brew. You, you, Jerusalem. Now. The Bible says as Jesus ascended into heaven, 
that there come a voice from heaven saying, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus that you see going away is coming back in like manner. Folks, he's coming back to Jerusalem. And go with me to Zechariah chapter 12. We're going to look at the Jerusalem factor of today. This prophecy of Zechariah, verse 1, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem." And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Folks, Jerusalem, God said he would make this city a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone. And that's exactly what we see developing today. Israel. 70th year as existence of a nation. The, the unbelievable convergence of nations now surrounding Israel, whether it be there on the border of the Golan Heights with Syria, whether it be the Russians that are moving in, the Iranians that are trying to set up camp, the Turks that are trying to possess in the northern part of Syria, whether it be the Hezbollah militant group in southern Lebanon, whether it be Hamas over in Gaza, or the Muslim Brotherhood at the Sinai in Egypt, or the Jordanians to the south, Israel is surrounded by different factions, some of them friendly, some of them foe, but one thing's for sure, it's, there's a reason on the convergence. There's a reason. <clears throat> it's because in these last days, whatever's going on in the spiritual world is manifesting in the physical. And God knew in the last days where it all began is where it's all going to end. And Christ is going to reign at some point for a thousand years, this planet. And he will set up that kingdom again in Jerusalem. He will rule and reign a thousand years. And so there's a convergence. And Lucifer knows this. Satan has tried his best to stop the ultimate plan of God since the garden. After Lucifer was cast out of heaven and a third of the angels fell with him, he's been constantly trying to derail the plan of God by causing man to commit the first original sin, by going after Moses, the deliverer, who was going to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt into the promised land. How he tried to stop the faith of Abraham. How he tried to slow down Jacob when his found out his son Joseph had been sold out by his brethren into bondage uh, into Egypt. And when Satan couldn't kill the baby Moses, he knew he would have to try another plan. So his plan was to kill the Christ child. In Jerusalem, King Herod heard that there was a child born. He sent out a decree to kill all the babies under the age of two, just like Pharaoh did in Egypt. And yet Christ escaped. Born in the city of David, in the city of Bethlehem, Christ was, of course, safely protected as the Spirit of God revealed to Joseph. Jerusalem has been a place where the leopards would come and would be healed by Jesus Christ, where there would be great, great miracles, uprisings, political upheaval. And it didn't matter if it was the Roman Empire, the Babylonian Empire, it didn't matter if it was the Ottoman Empire or the, or the British Empire, of all the different world the, Gre the Grecians, the Persians. I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of different great empires of the world have at one time controlled the city of Jerusalem. And yet, God said in the last days, he would restore the land of Israel and, uh, and the city of our God, the city of the great king, would be Jerusalem. Now, go with me to the book of Luke for just a second in the uh, 21st chapter, and uh, look what it says here about Jerusalem. Now, this is the chapter where there's a lot of end-time apocalyptic signs that we know that the Lord said are going to happen in the last days. He said in Luke 21, 
We'll start at verse 8. He said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from the heavens. But before all of these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, and deliver you up to the synagogues, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And then he goes on to say, to settle these things in your heart, what you're not going to say. Don't meditate on it. But look at verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. When you, he gives you all these signs, but when he says, but when you see Jerusalem compassed with different armies, know that the end is near, the desolation is nigh. And you can go with me back to the book of Zechariah and look what it says about Jerusalem. Jerusalem, this cup of trembling, this burdensome stone for all people. And the Bible says in verse 8, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, and the angel of the Lord before them. So Jerusalem will be surrounded. Jerusalem will come under siege at some point. And God is saying, I will be there for the city of Jerusalem. Look at verse 9. It shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will, I mean, that's just unbelievable. I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. In other words, Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling, this place of tension, this unbelievable desire of the whole world to possess it and control it. And yet God is saying, I'm preserving this city for myself. This is my holy city. This is where the, the Son of God gave his life on the cross and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven and is going to return and rule and reign a thousand years. This is the city of Jerusalem. And uh, I've put my name in the land of Israel. And so this is unbelievable. But I love the next chapter, 13. Look at verse 1. In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and uncleanliness. So the, praise God. Listen, Jesus Christ went to the cross. He died on the cross for the sins of humanity. And from his Emmanuel's veins flows a red crimson flow of redemption for a fallen world. Christ is the Savior. Christ is the Redeemer. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And a fountain has opened up in the house of David. A fountain has, has sprung forth of mercy and grace from the Messiah, and it happened in Jerusalem. And when we come back in a few moments, I'm going to show you about the attack that Jerusalem has still got to face in these last days. The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end times. Is this the final meaning of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, all right, you grab your Bible right now because you have to understand how important the city of Jerusalem is to God and how important you are to God. Look what it says in Psalms 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. 
beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is establishing Jerusalem as the holy city of the Lord, the city of our God. And during the end times, we're already seeing the team. Look, it's unbelievable. I call them Team Gog. Uh, but, uh, you know, it wasn't long ago. Recently, we've seen where Vladimir Putin and uh, Erdogan of Turkey, the president of Turkey, and uh, also the president of Iran, Hassan Rouhani, as they came together, they had what I call a two-day summit. I call it Team Gog. Uh, they are the three main nations that will be a part of this invasion of Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39. There's no question about it. It's, it's right in the scripture. And when, so when you see those three getting together for two days, talking about Syria, talking about peace in the Middle East, yet they themselves are on the doorsteps of Israel. And, uh, and so Israel, of course, has been responding. Everybody's been responding. Things have been getting intense. That's the cup of trembling that the Bible talks about. But look at Zechariah 14, because it's more than just tension. It does turn to conflict. And in, in the Bible prophesies, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. The house is rifled, the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. There is an attack coming. It, it is bound to happen. It is prophesied to happen. Israel will do everything it can to try to prevent it from happening, which they should. But at the end of the day, there is coming a confrontation of biblical proportion. And here's what's going to happen. Look at uh, what it says in verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now, a lot of times I get letters and emails from people says, Pastor Begley, I don't know why you keep going into the Old Testament. All of the Old Testament has been fulfilled. We're now in the New. No, all of the Old Testament has not been fulfilled. The Mount of Olives has not split in half. This event that's prophesied by, Jer by Zechariah has not happened yet which means it is prophetically being set up for the end time. I can take you into the book of Revelation and show you where there will be a great prophetic earthquake that is going to shake Jerusalem and kill 7,000 people. I believe that's the same earthquake that splits the Mount of Olives right here in Zechariah 14. And it's all because of the convergence of the enemy trying to take the, the Holy Land, if you will, trying to take the city of Jerusalem, trying to take the Temple Mount away from the plan of God. And the Lord will not allow it to happen. It will look like it's going to happen, but God will not allow it to happen. And that prophesy, prophecy has not taken place. But it's not the only one that's going to happen there. The Bible tells us that as these conflicts and wars begin to develop, uh, there will be still a great move of God. I can take you to Joel 2 and show you that in the last days, the Lord said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters would prophesy, the old men to dream dreams, young men to see visions. Upon my handmaid servants, I pour out my spirit, thus saith the Lord. The Lord said he's going to open, uh, look, pour out the rain, the former and the latter rain in the first month. He said that there's going to be signs in the sun. He said there's going to be signs in the moon, signs in the stars, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring, and men's hearts will even fail them for the fear that cometh upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. 
Then shall we see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when he comes, he's not coming back to be born of a virgin again. He's not coming back to be tied to a whipping post. He's not coming back to hang between the heavens and the earth upon the old rugged cross. But instead, he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, the victorious son of the living God. And he will return with power and great glory. And those that are redeemed... Are you serious? Those of us that are redeemed are going to begin to see this unbelievable, magnificent, uh, amazing sight beheld upon the earth. And some folks are going to say, oh, my Lord, hide me from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And the Bible says they're going to run for the rocks and the mountains in Revelation 6. And they're going to cry to the rocks and mountains, hide me from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. It's because uh, they've fought against the work of God. It's one thing to not believe. It's another thing to become an enemy with God, to become an enemy of Christianity. Uh, folks, I'll be honest with you. We've never seen such persecution on the church as we are today. Uh, in 50 nations of the world, Christians are persecuted even unto death. Uh, in America, maybe some of the Western world, the persecution's more softer, more subtle, more, um, you know, shunning, uh, making it difficult. There's some of that going on, but still not to the point of bloodshed, not necessarily. Uh, but certainly, if you look at the world, you look what's happening, Christians are being persecuted. And Israel is certainly going to come under great persecution. You can find that in Revelation 12. So you know, I'm not shocked by the things I see going on. So I know this is for a fact. When you look at Jerusalem, when you come to Jerusalem, if you'll come with me to Israel this October, I would love for you to come with me on a trip uh, in October. Because I love to stand on that Mount of Olives with you, or maybe we can go out on a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, take, uh, or go down to the, you know, the Garden Tomb, see Golgotha. It doesn't matter. Wherever you are in Israel, walking the streets of Jerusalem, you will know that you're in the city of the Lord. You will feel the Spirit of God come upon you. You're all, some of you are already saved, so you have the Spirit of the Lord in you. But it, when you experience walking, living, breathing the Holy Land, you can understand the importance of that area for God. Jerusalem, I call it the Jerusalem factor. There's no question about it. God is going to continue to restore and continue to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The biblical scriptures are coming to life like never before. Discoveries at the Temple Mount. Recently, they find the uh, signature, the uh, signet of the prophet Isaiah down by the Temple Mount. Recently, they found 10 coins from the era of 66 AD, the era of the Temple Mount just before destruction of it. We're seeing the sacred incense that was discovered in 1992 and how now the search for the ashes of the red heifer is going on. How that the temple, uh, the third temple's already being prepared. All the different uh, things that will go in there, whether it be the seven silver trumpets or whether it be the golden altar or whether it be, uh, you know, the priestly garments, all of the things needed, the menorah, the golden menorah, the golden shoe bread table, all of it is coming together. We're in the last days. And so as we approach the end, the, all three religions of the apocalypse will continue to converge upon Jerusalem. Man is being driven, man is being drawn to the presence of the Lord, the city of our God, the city of the great king. Are you saved? Because the Jerusalem factor will play a role. So people say to me all the time, Pastor, where are we at in Bible prophecy? My answer to them every time is, keep your eyes on Jerusalem. Keep your eyes on the nation of Israel, for that is God's prophetic timepiece as we get ever so close to the coming of the Lord. I'll be right back, folks, in a few moments with more on the Jerusalem factor. 
The world is experiencing an alarming series of apocalyptic events, historic weather disasters, earthquakes, droughts, wildfires, impending economic collapse, the rise of AI. In Revelation 9-11, Pastor Paul Begley and Pulitzer-nominated journalist Troy Anderson investigate if these are the true signs of the end time. Is this the final meaning of current events and prophecy referred to in the Bible? Revelation 9-11. Order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target.com. All right, all right. The Jerusalem factor. I got one more verse for you. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. God is saying that in these end times, he will pour upon the city of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication, the spirit of mercy and forgiveness, and reveal that Jesus Christ, that Yeshua, is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, even to those that as much as pierced his side on the cross. In other words, to all of the world, Christ will be revealed as the Messiah. And there's no question uh, that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are you saved? Because God's mercy, God's grace is being extended beyond Jerusalem. Yes, way beyond Jerusalem. It's to the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, no, but that the world through him might be saved. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know I need a Savior. I realize, Lord, that I'm lost, that I am a sinner, but I'm looking for your mercy, for that, that spirit of grace, that spirit of supplication. I'm asking God for you to forgive me of my sins, to wash away the filth of the world, to cleanse my heart with your red precious blood and make it as white as snow. I'm repenting of my sins today, God. I'm confessing them before you. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life, that Jesus would save me and lift me out of the mari clay of sin. Put me on a solid rock. Reach down to the gutter and lift me into the glory through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you. The Lord is pouring out that spirit right now. It's going into all the world, and you can receive that joy in Jesus in your life. It is the Jerusalem factor, but really it's all about the King, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. I love to hear from you. Write me. Let me know what God is doing in your life. I'll see you next week on the coming apocalypse.